Hey folks, sorry about the long break there. Um, I'm kind of finding myself in the same position I was in about 10 months ago when I started the channel. So, uh, got this little squirrel today. He's actually got some meat to him. They're getting pretty fat now at this time of year. But uh, So, my plans were to uh, build a butcher shack in my garage. Uh, I meant to do that this spring. So I would have had it for the hunting season this year. And I didn't get to it like a lot of other things I wanted to do. Um, next year, uh, it's absolutely going to happen. So I'm behind the curve again as far as butchering goes. I got a lot of time in this year with a friend of mine. So uh, last year I finished out the end of the season. I uh, did a couple pigs, one deer that he had left. And uh, that was kind of it. So this year he had me back. I probably did somewhere between 20 and 30 deer uh, myself. Uh, the, his shop probably did uh, well over 100. I think we're up at you know 40 deer just in the early archery season. So good experience. Uh, learned a ton. Uh, you know, and I've done it over the years, but working with an actual butcher uh, to see you know the different cuts you can get, different ways you can do things, and uh, get more bang for your buck. See what I did there? But, uh, so I learned a lot. I ended up being uh, one of the better guys in the shop as far as uh, I did most of the mounts. So all the shoulder mounts and you know the big bucks and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. So again behind the power curve this year uh, I didn't get my stuff out of the garage and into the basement before it snowed so I have to wait till spring uh, to start doing that. I can go in and clean up a little bit but no building, unfortunately, until the spring. So uh, I'll do a video on that as well uh, as I'm putting it together and, and share that with you guys. And hopefully for next season I'll have it. So I ended up, uh, got one deer this year with my bow. It was a pie ball doe. So I'll, I'll throw some pictures in here uh, of that deer <clears throat> along with some pictures from the uh, butcher shop of the deer that I was cutting up over there. but. I'm just gonna skin this little guy out. We'll cook him up. Um, squirrel season runs to the end of the month, so hopefully I can get a couple more and show you a couple different ways to do it. A uh, buddy of mine always asks, how do you cook them, how do you cook them? Uh, pretty sure I have videos on my other channel doing that, but uh, I'm gonna cook him up. Uh, hopefully again, get a couple more. I can do it a couple different ways. I was gonna do this one a way I've never done it yet uh, in the crock pot, but the wife had me throw in a nice pork butt, so that's on the go for tomorrow's dinner. So right in the slow cooker, that's going to be good. But uh, So limited space here with camera angles and stuff, so I'm just going to skin him out and get him all cleaned up, uh, and then we'll do the, the cooking bit on him. So in the interim, uh, I'll try to do some stuff like this, so we still got uh, gray squirrels open to the end of the month, like I said. Uh, rough grouse, uh, I'm probably not going to end up with one of them with all the snow. Uh, they're gone uh, before you even see them. Uh, much like the squirrels, actually, they're doing the same thing. So unless you sit and wait for them to come back out after things settle down, uh, they pretty much get treed as well. Uh, and then snowshoe hare is open right through March, I believe. So maybe we'll get lucky with one of them. Uh, so it's going to be mostly cooking videos. I'm going to be ice fishing this year uh, as well, so maybe we'll do some fish and stuff like that. Uh, how to 
you know, prep them on the different types of fish, uh, cook them up and all that good stuff, and then hopefully next year, <laughs> you know, we'll do more into the butchery with the shop set up and stuff like that. So let me get to it, uh, get them cleaned up, and we'll uh, cook them up. All right, so there he is all cleaned up. Obviously, a little bit of shot damage. Uh, that's what you're going to get, right? So I just got him in a a brine just to draw some of the extra blood out if there's any. And then we're going to start by steaming them off. Alright, so all steamed up, I let it cool down for a good while, so I'm burning my fingers. It's a lukewarm right now, so it's good. Clean that stuff out. So now I'm just going to take all the meat off the bone. And uh, when you steam it like that, this is one of my favorite ways to cook it. Uh, the meat just pulls right off the bone. You'd be surprised, really, how much meat you get off some of these things. But this one was a nice little chunky squirrel. It's almost like a tradition almost now. I did it for uh, Thanksgiving. Went out and shot one. I cooked it up just like this. So me, uh, my father-in-law, my brother-in-law. And the little guy tore into that. It's a good little snack. But I mean, I'm saying like the four of us ate off the one squirrel, you know, so. Like you see, usually the squirrel's pretty stringy if you don't cook it right. It's uh, try like chewing a rubber band. So, so this, this is a really good way to do it. part of the reason why I wanted to uh, try it in the slow cooker as well. Let's see how it comes out. Maybe that's a feature video. So, I'm going to bore you with this. I'm going to uh, Get this done, we'll move on to the next step. Alright, so as you can see, it's a nice little pile of meat. That's only one squirrel. It's part of the loin with the back strap. But, uh, didn't waste much, you know, hardly anything. Picked that thing pretty clean. That's all the bones, so you could. Use them again, you know, season them up, bake them in the oven, uh, use them for a stock or something. I'm not going to do that, but you could. So, some flour, some panko breadcrumbs. I'm going to do it in a bag and try not to make too much of a mess. But, so, in my flour, I'm going to season that up with some salt and pepper. So you throw the meat in there. Try to trap some air in the bag. So now, dig in. Knock any excess flour off. Get some pieces on that egg. You know the drill. I'm 
I'm going to do the same thing. Just throw it in this bag, leave a little bit of air in it, and then uh, give it a little shifty. So uh, I'll work on this as my hands become a mess, and uh, show you what that looks like before we fry it off. Alright, so I just pat down my bag so I can see if I missed any pieces. So that's good there. So now I put it back in the plate and I press it down kind of like a pancake. Uh, and then, as you know, the squirrel's already cooked. So all we're trying to do is get those breadcrumbs browned off really with the frying process. So uh, it's going to stick together, but you can break it up, you can cut it up but uh, it should fall apart. You'll be able to pull it apart as you eat it too. It's only going to be me and my son probably unless the wife doesn't eat it, but it's going to be good eating, boy. Alright, little test piece there. Rock and roll. There it is. Just gonna get tucked in now. Mm. That's the star of the show right there. So good eating it this way. That's it from the Butcher Shack. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, hopefully, you know, I'll be a little more consistent with the video, at least like the uh, header says on the channel. I'll try to get at least a video a week out. Uh, and because uh, hunting's over for the most part, again, except for, you know, squirrel, uh, like three things grouse and uh, snowshoe hare, probably won't be much in the way of that, but I'm going to get into ice fishing, like I said. So I'll be probably more cooking. I'll do some ice fishing and all that as well. But I appreciate you watching me. Hope you enjoyed that. Definitely give it a try if you haven't tried it this way. It's unbelievable. Awesome. So uh, take it easy. Alright, I'm gonna mouthful. <laughs>